We've got all the Rams nuggets that you need to know coming from training camp, the Rams' new preseason strategy, and we continue our list of the most important Rams heading into the 2023 season. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley, and welcome to another episode of Locked On Rams, your daily podcast covering your two-time Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube, so if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the fastest-growing Rams YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. If you really want to support the channel, hit that like button and let us know. What are your thoughts on some of these nuggets, and what are your thoughts on how the Rams are going to handle preseason this year. My name is Doug McKay. My friends call me DMAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade. The Lakers for SI, the Dodgers for Dodgers Nation, and now I'm covering the Rams for Locked On, and I continue to fly solo. Mr. Travis Rogers, the people's champ, he's on vacation this week, so I'm holding it down, but we've got a jam-packed show for you. Later, we continue our countdown of the most important Rams heading into the 2023 season with number five on our list. Then our second segment, will the Rams preseason strategy be different this year? It looks like it's going to be, but we begin today's show with nuggets from training camp. So we're going to go through a lot of stuff. So buckle up because we're going to cover a lot right here. But first, this episode of Locked On Rams is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay guaranteed fit ebaymotors.com let's ride ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply so here in our first segment we're going to run down the nuggets that you need to know from rams training camp this week starting with an update on cooper cup so a few days ago cooper cup left practice early it turned out to be a hamstring injury it was originally reported that he was going to be out for a few weeks but we got an update from new rams offensive coordinator mike lafleur he told reporters that Cooper Cup is going to be just fine. He said he's going through the rehab process, but he's day-to-day. He'll be all right. So that definitely is big news because a few days ago, you were a little concerned. Would he miss most, if not all, of training camp? Will we not see him on the field again until the first game against Seattle? But this appears to be not that big of a deal. Looks like we dodged a bullet here with Cooper Cup. I still hope that they proceed with caution, but I felt like the Denzel Watt Washington gift from the movie Fallen when I heard this just like ah oh, feels so much better right he is going to be just fine another injury update on another Rams receiver Ben Skoranek he's back he was out with his sore back and injured back he was dealing with a little bit of a back injury for a few days but he returned to practice now the second nugget you need to know is Kobe Durant is having himself a really nice training camp so far. He's definitely getting the star that you wanted him to have, a guy that you're hoping that emerges as really the star of the secondary moving forward. And you look at the role he's going to have this season. They're going to move him all around. You're going to see him in the nickel where he played 70% of the time last year. You're going to see him in the star role that was left behind by Jalen Ramsey after he was traded to the Miami Dolphins. And he was balling during team drills. There was a pass that was intended for Austin Trammell down the left sideline, and he was able to break it up. Just great body control there by Kobe Durant. Great awareness of where the football was going to be, the timing, the ability to get his hands there. So very impressive ball skills, very impressive body control there by Kobe Durant. And then later in the practice, he deflected a pass that was intended for Puka Nakua. So number two, Kobe Durant is continuing to emerge. He's definitely having the start of training camp that you wanted him to have because he needs to be the star of the secondary, not just this year, but moving forward. I think he has the skills. I think he has the talent. I think he has the speed. I also think he has the charisma. He has the star power. He has that multi-million dollar megawatt smile, right? So I think he definitely has what it takes to be a star. So that's very encouraging. And number three, my guy's 
Stetson Bennett continues to impress. We're already in week two now of Rams training camp, and he's showing no signs of slowing down, no signs of this being too big for him. He looks comfortable. He's making throws. You're seeing that elite ball placement. You're seeing him throw guys open. Great touch on the deep balls. And Rams radio broadcaster J.B. Long, the voice of the Rams, he tweeted out, haven't seen every throw today, but Stetson Bennett's had a few nice ones, including a perfectly placed red zone TD just now in team drills. Nice signs of growth in week two of Rams camp. Now, he's splitting time with Brett Ripien right now, but he's getting a lot of opportunities to go out there and make plays. He's impressing his teammates, impressing his coaches. I think I have to buy myself a Stetson Bennett number 13 jersey. I've been thinking about it. I think I'm definitely going to cop one this weekend, but he also threw a dime to rookie Xavier Smith on a ball that had a really nice ball placement on it, so I'm very excited about Stetson Bennett because we have a legit backup quarterback at the very least. Maybe a guy that could be a starter one day, but at the very least, if Matthew Stafford has to miss time, I think we have someone that can go in there and make this team competitive. A guy that can go out there and be more than a game manager. He can make throws and make plays, and the National Football League in 2023, to have a competent backup quarterback on a rookie contract that has a chance to start one day, that's huge. But coming in at number four, Puka Nakua has continued to be the story. And a couple things you know about Puka Nakua at Rams training camp are one, that he's getting those first team reps with Matthew Stafford. Of course, Cooper Cup, he's been sidelined, but they are featuring him. He's getting a lot of opportunities. And two, probably the most surprising one is that he's getting reps as a kick returner. He's working in as a kick returner. And I looked it up, didn't have too much experience of being a kick returner throughout his career, had none in college. So that's going to be very interesting. It also shows that they want to get him into the fold in some capacity. If it's not as WR3 to start things off, they want to have him have a role early on and then kind of work his way into that. But I still have high hopes that he's going to get some opportunities early on because of his versatility. You see this guy in pads? He's pretty big. We're talking about six deuce. We're talking about a big physical guy that's strong, great strong hands, a contested catch warrior. So very excited about the possibility of Puka Nakua because ignore the speed at the combine. It's about football speed. He has that football quickness. He knows where to be, knows how to use his body. And him as a kick returner, maybe he's not going to get a kick return for a touchdown, but he's going to be sure handy. He can break tackles. He can get some solid yardage if he gets that role. And then five, undrafted rookie Tamarcus Davis is working with the first team. The undrafted rookie out of Arizona State was was seen in a clip with Darion Kendrick working with the ones, and that's what he's been doing the last few practices. And this is someone that has a lot of potential. This is someone that has the physical tools, the athletic gifts to make it in this league. If you look at his measurables, he stands at 5'11", he's 180 pounds, has 9 and 3 quarter inch hands, 30 and 5 in inch arms, ran a 4'5", 240, had 10 reps of the bench. His shuttle time was very impressive at 4'1", 2, had a very impressive 3 cone drill, an impressive vertical leap, an impressive long jump. So he's always had those physical skills. Started his college career at Baylor, then was at Arizona State. They changed their scheme up. That didn't really favor his skill set, but what he does, if you look at his highlights, if you look at his film, he's someone that's really adept in pass coverage. He also has the ability to be a plus tackle, to come up and stop the run. He's not afraid to get down and dirty and make some big stops. He can also cover tight ends. He's got that quick twitch. He's got that burst, those read and react instincts, so I'm definitely high on Tamarcus Davis getting an opportunity, and if you look at last season, there's just not a lot of experience coming back when you look at this cornerback room. There were only 790 defensive snaps with the four guys returning. You had 483 with Darion Kendrick, 281 with Jacoby Durant, 26 with Robert Rochelle, and zero with Sean Jolly. So he's going to get his opportunity. If he shows out, I think it's a chance to earn a role on this team at the very least. Could see some special teams or some other opportunities for him. So I think they're very high on the idea of giving Tamarcus Davis an opportunity to win a role during camp. And you also have some other rookies that are getting opportunities too. Russ Yees, Quinn Lake, Christian Roseboom, Byron Young, they're all running with the ones too. So that's why there's this youthful energy at Rams training camp because you've got guys in positions that we've seen for years that were held down by veterans. There's a lot of rookies that are learning on the fly, learning on the job, but they are getting so much experience, such a big opportunity for some of these guys, and we'll see who takes it and runs with it. And then at number six, Logan Bruss is getting opportunities at backup right tackle. Now, we know that 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 position is Rob Havenstein. Now, the only question is, who's going to be his backup? Is it going to be A.J.R. Curry? Is it going to be Warren 
McClendon Jr. Well, now it looks like Logan Bruss is in the mix. And look, Bruss, he hasn't gotten a fair shake. I see people out there saying Bruss is a bust and this and that. Yeah, it might not work out, but we still don't know. This really is his rookie season because last year he gets injured during preseason. He hurts his knee. He missed the entire year. And yes, to be fair, he did not look good during preseason. But still, you just never know when the light's going to turn on for some of these offensive linemen. It's not an easy position to transition from college to the pro ranks. Sometimes it takes multiple years, but he has the pedigree. He is a fellow Wisconsin Badger along with Rob Havenstein. We know the lineage and the history of elite offensive linemen that have come from Madison, Wisconsin and come from that program. So that's something to look forward to during training camp. And I think for him, just mixing it up with Bruss, that shows you they want the versatility. They want the optionality. And I think that, look, that's a position he played at Wisconsin. And then another little nugget. By all reports, it feels like Tremaine Ingram Jr. and Steve Avila, they're locking down those guard spots. It looks like they have the inside track to earn those roles. And you look at the center spot, Brian Allen, he got all the first team reps on Thursday. We also saw Coleman Shelton. He was there at practice getting some first team reps as well. We know that Coleman Shelton, he can play one of the guard spots as well, has more versatility than a Brian Allen. Like I said a few weeks ago, if Allen doesn't earn that position, which I think he will, we saw how well he played in 2021, might not have a good role for this team. So it's good to see that he's taking care of business at the center spot to start camp. But coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk about the preseason strategy for the Rams. Is it going to be different this year? Will we see more starters play during the preseason? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. But first, let's talk about our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. August is here, and you know what that means. The official start of Fantasy Football Drafting Month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball on Underdog Fantasy. All you do is one live snake draft, no waivers, no trades, and Underdog sets your best lineup every week. Try it out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. The largest fantasy football contest of all time is back and even bigger, with $15 million of total prizes up for grabs, including an absurd $3 million going to the winner. Last year, the winner drafted their team in July, so don't wait around. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and sign up with promo code Locked On to get your first deposit up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code Locked On. Underdog is the easiest place to play fantasy football and the best place for best ball. Best Ball Mania 4 is the largest fantasy football tournament ever. The winner of Best Ball Mania 3 drafted their team in July, so what are you waiting for? So if you're a fantasy football junkie like me, you're going to want to play underdog fantasy. I thought the biggest thrill I could get was in 2021 when I rode Cooper Cup to a big fantasy football championship, but this will be bigger. It's the largest fantasy football tournament of all time. You can win up to $3 million. And what I love too is I'm in tons of leagues. I'm always changing my lineups. This one, it does it for you. It takes care of itself. So visit underdogfantasy.com and find them in the app store and sign up with promo code code locked on to get your first deposit up to $100. That's underdog fantasy promo code locked on. And we are off and running here on Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday and sometimes on the weekends, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And a special shout out to our everyday listeners. We appreciate you listening to every episode, watching every episode. And you can be an everyday listener too. Membership is free. Join the club and you won't miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. But here in our second segment, we're talking about the Rams plan for the pre preseason. Will we see more action from some expected starters during the preseason? Well, Les Need, he was on Doug Gottlieb's radio show and he was asked about the Rams' plan for the preseason, and here's what he had to say. It will not be like years past, but it will be like years past. And I know McVay had some names, you know, like because we do have some players like Rob Havenstein, Tyler Higby, some players that have been here since our first Super Bowl into the second Super Bowl. So the team does have some core veterans that will, uh, 
let's call it the quote non preseason play treatment but there is an element of trying to engineer as competent a collective as possible and because we mentioned we're gonna let's talk the defensive side of the ball there's a lot of players on their rookie contracts on that side of the ball other than Aaron Donald and so we're gonna need those guys to gel during preseason so get ready Rams fans because it looks like we're gonna see more action from projected starters during the preseason than we've ever have in the Sean McVay era I think you're gonna see mostly on the defensive side of the ball guys get action guys get reps especially in those position battles and years past it makes a ton of sense right you have veterans you have stars you have guys that are expected to be a part of a team that's gonna make a deep run a Super Bowl run yes they have playoff expectations but right now not necessarily Super Bowl expectations and if you want to win that Super Bowl, if you want to shock the world, you have to develop these young players, these rookies. And in most cases, you're saying, okay, the starters aren't going to compete in the preseason, right? But this is different because we don't know who the starters are at a lot of different positions. A lot of positions are wide open with young players having an opportunity to fill those roles. So you're going to have to see what they look like during preseason games. Because yes, the joint practices... There's a lot that they cover there, but still at the end of the day, you just can't replace that game action. And I think you're going to want to see guys get those opportunities to truly evaluate and assess what you have in them. And I think really, even guys that have been here for a few years, I think would benefit. I think Ernest Jones, who last year, he wasn't a starter. He played behind Bobby Wagner. He learned a lot on the field, off the field. I think he's ready to take a big step forward this year. He's going to be Mr. Green Dot. We know that he'll probably be voted in as a captain. I'd like to see him get some opportunities. Michael Hoyt, who was trying to still see, can he handle that edge rusher position? Marquise Copeland, Bobby Brown the third, Darion Kendrick, Kobe Durant. If you want him to be that star secondary member, that star cornerback, I think he needs some more seasoning, some more game action before the year begins. Then Christian Roseboom, Jordan Fuller, who only played in three games last year due to that hamstring injury. And even when he did play, they were going with Rappin' Scott quite a bit over him. So I think he still has a lot to prove. And how about Akello Witherspoon, who they signed in the offseason late before training camp? Is he still worthy of being a starting cornerback in the NFL? Because we saw in 2021, he was really good. He had a 78.8 PFF grade. That ranked eighth. He was ranked second in man coverage. He allowed a reception on just 48.5% of his targets and allowed a 48 quarterback rating. Both were ranked third highest in the NFL. Is that guy still in there or is he someone that's taken a step back in his career because last year he only played in four games he was dealing with that hamstring injury how does he look can you trust him as a starter on the outside and then also look what happened in 2022 didn't play your starters didn't play a lot of players that you thought are gonna have a big role for you and you were still decimated by injuries especially along that offensive line and then you lost your big three in Stafford Cup and Aaron Donald so this is the National Football League it's violent we understand that and I'm not expecting Sean McVay to just completely change what he knows has worked right his strategy has largely worked it's turned into two Super Bowl appearances it's turned into a Super Bowl win I think the only difference this year like I said is that if you want to reach those Super Bowl expectations or playoff expectations you need these young players to emerge and I think you fast track that by giving them opportunities in the preseason like I said it's tough to say which starters aren't going to play when you don't know who all your starters are I think they still have to earn those spots and I think they can truly do that by playing and performing well in the preseason and also too, just look at that brutal schedule early on for the Rams they go at Seattle at home against the Niners at Cincinnati at Indianapolis they should win that game and then at home against the Eagles those are some of the best offenses in the league that's one of the toughest starts to the year of any team in the National Football League. So you're going to need your defense to gel early on, to step up early on, and try to slow those offenses down so this Rams offense can score points and keep things competitive and keep things interesting and try to steal a couple of those games. Because if not, you run the risk of starting the year one in four, and you just don't want to have that. So in most cases, I completely understand. I still think that Sean McVay is not going to play all of his starters, especially offensively defensively I think there's more of an opportunity so we know that coaches for the most part 
they're not very elastic thinkers, right? They really stick to what works for them. And what has worked for Sean McVay has been this model. And we've seen tremendous amounts of success being gained from it. But still, I think this is a year where you could see him at least reconsider things for one season before you have more veterans, more established players moving forward. I mean, just look at how it affected them in 2022. The Rams' big free agent signing, Allen Robinson, he wasn't able to develop any rapport or chemistry with Matthew Stafford. Tutu Atwell didn't play. He could have used more reps. The revamp secondary with Nick Scott, David Long, and Troy Hill, they could have used more reps. So, And I just think there's certain positions that you just need to throw out there. I mean, that you need to give those reps to and get that experience as a contingency plan. I mean, look, we want Matthew Stafford to be out there all 17 games. We want to be under center every single snap unless it's a blowout. But when you consider his injury history, when you consider last year dealing with the spinal cord contusion, the concussions, this offensive line that still needs to prove itself. You need a backup quarterback that you can trust, can be competent, that can give this team a chance to win if Stafford goes down. And just look at last season. When he did go down, it was next man up. Wolford, he wasn't ready for that opportunity. He didn't play in 2021. And in 2022, he looked like he was behind Bryce Perkins. He didn't make the most of the opportunity. And then when they brought in Baker Mayfield, he instantly became the starter. And those two, they were left behind. So I think this this year more than ever, you need to have a backup quarterback that you can trust. And I think that I want to see Stetson Bennett out there almost selfishly because I want to see him in that Rams uniform in preseason games, but also too, I want to see him continue to develop. And if you have to go to Stetson Bennett, he'll be ready for that opportunity as soon as he gets that call. Now, I want to reiterate that Sean McVay's strategy works. And if he doesn't want to play his expected starters, he's the Super Bowl winning coach that is the boy genius. He's the precursor cautious one. He's the one that has two Super Bowl appearances and one Super Bowl at the age of 36. In McVay, we trust. I also will say that I bended those, those practices with other teams, those joint practices, and those are very intense. Lots of contact, except for the quarterbacks. They do everything from red zone and two-minute drills, special teams, third down conversions, but it doesn't feel quite the same as in-game action, but hey, we understand that the most important thing is staying healthy, but I think think that if you want to fast track the development of some of these younger players and truly have the evaluation down to the point where you can trust that these are the guys that you want to roll with heading into week one, you're going to have to play some of these expected starters, especially on defense during the preseason. But coming up on Locked On Rams, we continue our countdown of the most important Rams heading into the 2023 season. That's coming up next on Locked On Rams. And welcome back to Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday and sometimes on the weekend. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And another shout out to our everyday listeners. We appreciate you listening to every episode, watching every episode. And you can join the Everyday Listeners Club too. Membership is free and you won't miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. But here in our final segment, we continue our countdown of the most important Rams heading into the 2023 season with number five right tackle Rob Havenstein. So Rob Havenstein has been a rock for this Rams offensive line. He started for the Rams ever since he was drafted back in 2015. He has been an absolute anchor at that position. He was the constant last year. Despite all the injuries, he was holding down that right tackle spot. He was playing at a high level when the rest of this offensive line was decimated by injuries. It's been well documented. It's been the most injured offensive line in the history of the sport. 12 different combinations through the first 12 weeks. We've talked about it extensively on this show, but Rob Havenstein is someone that you could count on. Someone that each and every week continued to perform well, continued to perform like one of the better right tackles in the sport, and I expect that to continue this season. Now in 2022, if you look at his numbers, he had six sacks allowed, eight hits allowed, 41 total pressures allowed, a 71.7 run blocking grade, and a 68.6 pass blocking grade. So I expect those numbers to be 
be a consistent. I expect him to go up because I think that he's going to have more help around him. There's no way that it could be any worse than last year as far as injuries. They were decimated. Like I said, it was like a season of squid game. Guys going down each and every single week. I don't expect that this season. I think they're going to be healthier. I think there's more talent. It's a bigger, girthier offensive line, and that's going to help Rob Haven's time because he definitely carried the load last season. Now, if you look at his position battle status, there is no position battle for Rob Havenstein. This guy is a 100% lock to start at the right tackle position. The only question is, who is going to be his backup? you got A.J. R. Curry and Warren McClendon Jr. They're going to be competing for his backup spot. They're going to be competing for that swing tackle role for this team. But other than that, this one's easy. Now, why is he so important? Well, because he's still their best offensive lineman. Until someone else emerges, Rob Havenstein is a guy that still gives you quality. He gives you Pro Bowl level performances each and every week. Sometimes it's not the best. Like 2019 had a little bit of a down year, but for the most part, ever since he took that starting job in 2015, that's been his position. He's continued to play there at a high level. So he's going to also bring a lot of mentorship and maturity and a much needed veteran along that offensive line. We saw with Big Wick gone last year. He's someone that had to step up. Now, Havenstein is a different player as far as his leadership strategy, his voice. We know Big Wit has a bigger personality. He has an interesting way of teaching younger players. You saw him take Steve Avila under his wing the other day and compare being offensive lineman to his golf swing and metaphors like that. But Havenstein is a guy that, one, leads by example and, two, he makes everything Everyone feel like they have a chance. If you listen to him talk to the media a few weeks ago, he talked about this offensive line room and how much he expects from each and every player, even knowing that most of them are not going to make the team. So I think just having a guy like that in your offensive line room, a guy that's going to give everyone a chance, a guy that is going to allow some of these younger players to learn from him, I think it's going to be absolutely massive. So Rob Havenstein and a team that doesn't have a ton of veterans, he's someone that just makes you feel good. He makes you feel safe. It's like being driven around by your grandparents when you're young. You just feel nice and safe right there, right? That's how I feel with Rob Havenstein. And this year, more than ever, it's of the utmost importance. It's imperative that they keep Matthew Stafford vertical. And one of the big reasons for that is going to be the play of Rob Havenstein. So really, the only thing he needs to do is stay healthy because if he's healthy, we know he's going to have success out there. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Rams. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Locked On Rams YouTube channel. It's the fastest growing Rams YouTube channel. So do us a favor, head over there, join the party, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button. Also, let us know what are your thoughts on the nuggets we talked about earlier, the Rams strategy for the preseason, your thoughts on Rob Havenstein heading into this year. Will he be a pro bowler? Let us know. And until next time, whose house? It's Locked On Rams house.